Hello, welcome to episode one in my YouTube channel. Um, I'm gonna do like talking and stuff on here because I'm really good at talking and not stopping talking. I kind of just wanted to do like a little talk on here because um, it's easier and I'm tired of putting stuff on TikTok or whatever because it's overwhelming. So I'm gonna do this. So this can be a longer video and that's fine. So hello, my name is Sydney. Um, I'm currently 21 years old. Um, I'm based in the Seattle area. I am very artistic and I did like a little introduction video on here. So we're we're not going to do all that, but I am a photographer. I do a little bit of video. I do a lot of drawing. I love plants. I talk and talk and talk. So I want to give a little about me for like my photography and a big question that I get from a lot of people is like, how did you start doing photography or how did you start working with blah, 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 or whatever. So I'm going to do like a big little summary of everything as best as I can. When I was 15-ish, 15, I started doing a lot of photography with like my parents' cameras and stuff. And I was just taking pictures of everything because I was like, ew, pretty flower, I want to blah, blah, blah. For my 16th birthday, my parents gifted me a camera and it was really good. And I used it very very well for multiple years. I shot everything from I did like portraits and I did senior shoots and you know just anything nature abstract whatever like I was just learning how to use a camera. I was on staff at a local convention called Everfree Northwest and it's a My Little Pony convention it's like the best thing ever and I was on staff as a photographer there like volunteer and I was shooting for it and then one of my favorite artists they're well, they're technically brothers, Nate and Gabe Brown, also known as Basic and Black Griffin. They did a show together and I photographed it. And it was like the best thing ever. It was my first ever concert or anything. I was like 16, 17. I don't know how old I was. And I took photos for it and they were not the best at all, but they were good for me. And I was super, super proud. And I was like, whoa, these are amazing. And they thought it was amazing too, because they actually put some of the photos in their little like CD. They put them in their CD for their album that came out that summer but they were so encouraging about everything they were so encouraging they made me want to do more photography I was like wow this is amazing I love concerts I love like the encouragement and the photography and everything so I just did it and I was like I'm gonna do I'm gonna get into concert photography I was making YouTube videos like just like little trip recaps and stuff um I put them on this channel and I still love doing those. I just don't really leave my house that often. And I don't hang out with friends that often. But once I do, I'd like to make more videos of that. <laughs> but so that was where photography kind of started, like becoming a thing in my life. I did a workshop called Shoot from the Pit. And that's with actually with Luke Combs as photographer. It's a workshop you sign up for, you pay for, and then you spend the time taking photos of the sold out Luke Combs, like big arena show or whatever you got to have dinner with the crew and like see how like the underground you know behind the backstage of everything and stuff it was actually really funny because it was me and this other lady I had no idea who Luke Combs was and he was me and the other photographer that signed up for this workshop we were in the hallway like from getting food or something and this guy went up to us and he was like you know, are you guys photographing the show tonight? And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, have fun. I'll see you up there. And we're like, cool. And I was like, he's nice. And then that lady was like, that's literally Luke Combs that we just talked to. And I was like, who? Oh, because I looked next to me and there was literally him on the poster. And it was like, sold out to Coma Dome, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's over. But he was super nice and everything. And that was a cool experience. And I learned a lot through that workshop. I personally would not do it in the future because that was very expensive and it is more expensive now. And I am broke. Um, but the experience was really, really good, and I'm super glad I did it. So I did that one back in fall of 2019. And then we flash forward. This is my senior year at this point, um, 2019 and 2020. La-di-da-da-da. -da -da. I have no idea what I want to do with my life. Um, I was telling, like, advisors and stuff I want to do, like, baking and pastry arts and cooking or art or something. I had no direction. I was just like... All right. And then lockdown happened. <laughs> so senior year in lockdown is quite the experience because um, they were basically like 
first it was like, oh, nice. We get two weeks off of like extra vacation. And then it became another two weeks and then another. And we, the very first person who got COVID in the United States that like officially got it, he was a teacher at the school that I was going to. Obviously, people freak out. They they closed down that. I was going to two schools at once because I was doing like classes at one school and I went to another school for other stuff. That school closed down and then they actually had to like spray off everything because they have no idea what this weird mystery diseases. I remember the pictures in the news article where like the lockers were all like like closed off with, like plastic and stuff and the people in their hazmat suits were spraying because nobody had any idea what it was. They were just like, we don't know what happened and we don't know where this guy got it, blah, 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 blah. And then after a while, like there was a lot of like, we're all in this together. And then all the streets were empty and stuff. And it was super weird. And then we kind of started settling into like, okay, we can slack off. We're seniors. We can slack off. We have no idea where this is going. The teachers are excusing everything. We can say, we can straight up say, my camera doesn't work and we don't have to show up to our class. Like it was super easy to be a senior during COVID in that way. But socially we were struggling. It was just really, really rough to me because I'm very dramatic. I was like, the world is ending. Like, there's no hope. This is terrible. This is awful. I was so miserable. I remember crying, like, every day because I was just so upset. Like, the world is never going to go back to normal. And it honestly did not. It did not go back to normal in any kind of way for me um, or anyone else. But, like, for me, because I'm, I'm sharing my little story here. And so once we got out of the initial, like, oh, you can go outside. Like we got to that point. Um, a couple of my friends and I, we did these little parking lot meetups where we would take our cars and we would pull them back around and then we'd sit in our cars in a little circle like so that we are socially distanced from each other. And then we'd do our little hangouts and we'd we'd talk and we'd play music and stuff and play games. We'd do everything, but it would be from our cars. <laughs> Thinking about that time was so weird because like that doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but that was also a couple of years ago. And and so much has happened since then. So we did these little parking lot meetups and they were super fun and crazy and stuff and blah, blah, blah. I have a friend, my friend, Brendan. We love Brendan. Brendan is very fun in the way that he has a crazy music taste. And at the time, everyone was like, yeah, that's Brendan. He he has this whacked out music taste. Nobody even knows what he listens to. And that was part of the fun of it. I know he loved it too. Like he'd play the most random stuff and be like, like, yeah, you guys would love this. And we're like, Oh, what is this? So Brendan introduced us to his wonderful music taste while we were doing these parking lot hangouts. And Brendan's like, let me put you guys on to like hyper pop. I know hyper pop nowadays is like a very like, oh, you're calling that song hyper pop, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to call it to people who don't listen to this scene at all. So I'm just, I'm saying it. Do not kill me. Don't get mad at me. So he's like, let me put you guys on to some hyper pop. And we're like, Oh, no. And he puts us on to two things. One is Money Machine by 100 Gex. And two is Ginger Tea by Breakins. And this guy, he'd be listening to Ginger Tea by Breakins. And we never understood. We're like, this is a dumb song. Like, why? Why are you so obsessed with this? Why are you so obsessed with this album? I hated Money Machine, first of all. I have never heard so many swear words in my life in one moment. And I was just shocked. I was like, what? not play this out loud you could not do it and then ginger tea we just hate it because we hate it like there wasn't even a reason until the drop happened and then we're like no turn it off turn this off and we we did not tolerate it but he still played it he played it over and over and over until one day it clicked and so it clicked and then it clicked really hard and i was like oh wait a second is this the best music Ever? And I became like obsessed with it right when his album Punk 2 dropped. And so so there was Ginger Tea, you know, there was Ginger Tea, there was Rozier, there was all those ones. And I was like, this is like, I, but also like really good. And then I became obsessed with it. I got really, really into Breakins' music. Peak lockdown. So everyone's inside. Everyone has nothing to do but to be online all day. And so, you know, I watched his music videos and I was like, right when the dropout, oh my goodness, <laughs> right when the dropout music video dropped, the dropout dropped. <laughs> that was a really big deal and I watched it over and over. I even remember like like drawing scenes from it and stuff because I love making fan art for people and I like drew some scenes from Dropout and I sent it over to Mary Kids and he's like, oh, I need it. I was like, ah! Um, <laughs> it 
it's so weird to see like life progress the way that it does. But anywho, so did all that. Um, I became obsessed with ginger tea to the point where I was like, I'm going to make a music video for it. I had no idea how to write a music video. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like a little 17 year old just being like, hmm. <laughs> let me just do this. And and so I wrote a whole little script and I sent it over to Breakins' manager, Danny. It got no response, nothing, which like expected from that. And then I also sent it to the, I also made it to the group that made um, all of Breakins' music videos, um, like for all his first stuff. And so I sent it to them. They're called Overcast. And I sent it over to Overcast and I was like, hey guys, you want to do a little video together? And they're like, mm -hmm do you want to be a discord mod? And I was like, okay. So then I was a discord mod and discord mods are really cool, especially that. So, okay. A little bit of context. Once again, if you know anything about this and I say anything wrong, I do not want you to come at me. Don't get mad. I'm just trying to explain it in the most like general terms ever. So basically, Hyperpop is a scene of music that broke off from like electronic, um, emo, which is kind of like everything. It's the best way to describe like 2020 as Hyperpop is like glitchy music, pitched up vocals, like crazy chaos. Like that's the best way I can describe it for like my grandma. And, and it was a really big, like very online scene because it was during lockdown. But even before that, there was a lot of like networking on like SoundCloud and everything. Brendan was actually like one of the first people to discover break into his music like back on SoundCloud in the day and then just followed it with them like throughout his projects and stuff and so it was really cool that he's like whoa like you're here from the beginning and now so this was during the time when everyone was online and in their houses so also hyperpop the the peak hyperpop era or whatever was like during lockdown in my opinion it was during lockdown overcast the music video company they actually did videos for a lot of artists especially like hyper pop artists as they were starting off and now they're like really big and stuff and doing crazy amazing things but they took these people with, and made like zero budget videos and it was just a couple of friends making videos and they did really good and um the people of overcast are still doing like videos and stuff but they've been able to do things like they did the romantic homicide video um they did the put your records on video and um they're doing amazing and i'm super proud of them we were online during lockdown and stuff, and so everybody was, like, networking and talking to each other and doing music and stuff. Meanwhile, Overcast was still releasing music videos. They were helping elevate the scene so much. Like, so much wouldn't have been a thing without them. And I love them so much. I love the people. <laughs> so there was a lot of, like, friendship making over the years and stuff, and it was like that for, like, a year and a half or so. And then finally, when restrictions got lifted enough for people to do a couple shows, Overcast announced that they are going to do a live show with a lot of their top people that they've worked with or are in community with. And so they did a show in Philadelphia that actually had break-ins. It had Aries, the artist, um, Zach Greer, Alden, Midwest, and Koi. All of them except for Aries, I think, they did videos with one of the, like, the big people coming out of Overcast. They actually let me take photos for the show. And I got like a new camera and everything for it. I was so excited to use it. And and I actually got to shoot alongside some photographers that I really, really like and admire. Videographers and everything. And it was so, so cool. It was my first ever solo trip, like without my parents or anything. And it was also fresh out of lockdown and stuff. And I was terrified. I was like, I don't know how in the world this is going to go. I'm very introverted. I'm also like, I'm very mild compared to a lot of these people. And I'm scared of how this is going to go. <laughs> but it went really well. It was actually like a massive, massive networking thing. People from all over the country who have had inside jokes and memories and stuff, everything online over the last year and a half, we all flew to one spot in Philadelphia. And so we got to hang out. We got to, you know, walk around the city. We got to see like the parks and the, go out and eat and stuff. And it was so crazy. Oh my goodness. Imagine hundreds of people that talk online all meeting together in one spot. That was like, that was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It wouldn't have been possible without COVID, but it also wouldn't have been possible without Overcast. So Thank you guys. So anywho, so I took photos for the concert and there was so much I learned through that. I was like, oh my goodness, this is like serious stuff. But it was also so crazy to see like people who you saw 
in music videos, like whether it be the people who help make the music videos or the artist or whatever, and like seeing them because a lot of them it was their first live show and they did so good. I was able to take photos for everybody except for Breakins for some reason because they had a weird role where like nobody could take photos of him, which like I respect, but um, but I got to see his first show ever there and <laughs> I cried. No way. And it was me and all my friends that we like met online and we were all there in like the mosh pit and stuff and be like, ah! and I was like, this is so surreal. But anywho, so that show happened and the photos I decided because I love illustration. I also love photography. And I was like, why don't I just combine them? So I did. And it actually turned out really good. And I made these little collages and they're all on my website. If you ever want to like dig through the collage section, you can go to the very bottom and see them. But those were my very first collages. I've never seen anybody do anything like that, like cool effects or drawings on their photos or anything. And so I was like, I'm going to try something different and combine two things that I love and make it like special and personal. And it was a hit. People liked it a lot. Um, I'm not saying I'm a trendsetter or anything, but I see a lot of that stuff now. And I'm like, <laughs> so that show happened and I was inspired in a whole new way. I was like, holy moly, this is incredible. The scene is crazy. Like what in the world? Also at the time I, so I graduated high school. It's obviously lockdown. So like, what are you going to do? Be at home? Like, so I did an online community college for a little bit um did it for like a year and a half and then um I kind of just got too caught up with my commitments and life and stuff and I was like I need a break from this and so I stopped I was also doing a production internship at my church at the time and that was using a lot of hours too and so there was a lot going on in my life and I was like I also had a full-time job and I was like I think I need a break from this. So I stopped doing school and all that. But then we get to 2022. So that was 2021. Now we're in 2022. So 2022 was a crazy year in the way that I was on the grind for photography. I was on the grind for photography so hard that year. I shot for so many concerts. I was reaching out to so many people. I was doing crazy things. Like, I don't even know what I did all of that year. I just did so much. But the thing that really, like, made it start, like, whoa, like, crazy, incredible, like, what just happened? The thing that really, like, made it take off is, so the artist Aries, um, he announced a tour and break-ins was opening and they were going to play in Seattle. And one of my goals from 2020 on was like, I'm going to take photos for the first ever Breakins concert, which I didn't do. But but then it was like, I'm going to take photos for the first ever Breakins Seattle concert because that's where I live. So I made that my goal. And I was like, this is a pretty impossible goal. Because also, by the way, at the time, like Breakins was pretty active in like the very beginning of lockdown stuff. But then he just disappeared off the face of the earth for like a year and a half. He was unreachable by any means and I didn't know how in the world I was ever gonna find a way to contact him and so I I tried and I tried and I couldn't get it and I couldn't get a photo pass for the show and I tried like reaching out to Aries team and everything and nothing and then literally the day of Aries himself dm'd me on Instagram back and he was like yeah what's your name we'll put you on the list and I was like huh what I beg your finest pardon and so I was able to shoot for it. And I actually ended up meeting all of them, um, like Aries and Breakins and all of those people. And it was super cool for me because I was like, I had like little chocolate bars and pretty pictures that I gave them and stuff. And like, I, I wonder if they still have it. That would be funny if they did. But yeah, so I took photos for not only Aries, but I took photos for Breakins, which was like, oh, what? Because that was like the show that nobody could get into. Nobody like, and because I shot for Aries, I was able to shoot for Breakins too because he was the opener. And so I took photos and it was so much fun. Oh my goodness gracious. All the other things that I've done in the past were fun, but this was like, oh my goodness. Something I was told in the past is never take photos for an artist that you're a very big fan of respectfully, I think that is a baloney sandwich. And I think that the more passionate you are about an artist, the more exponentially better your photos will be. Because those photos were the best ones I've ever taken at that point. And it showed. And the people freaked out. They're just like, how in the world did you take these photos? And through that, through that whole experience, I actually connected with break-ins and everything. And it was really cool. 
And so the rest of the year was spent, you know, taking photos for people. I did my first ever, um, like I flew out to places. Um, I actually went with my dad. We flew to Los Angeles overnight to see my friend Monty's show because I really wanted to see one of Monty's shows and it was really good and I took photos and those photos were mid but like the show itself was crazy and I'm so proud of him and all the other people I got to meet people through that and that was really cool and then I also flew to New York and I stayed with a friend there and I did a photo shoot there and I've never done a photo shoot before and I actually did two there but one of them was really really good and I was like holy moly I'm literally doing a photo shoot in New York City right now like who is she? So it was a really cool year for everything. And then towards the end of 2022, things start to go a little crazy in the way that I got a summer job at Microsoft. So I had a lot of savings built up and I was going stir crazy because I didn't leave for college. I didn't, I didn't do anything. And I was like, I need a break. Also, I'm house sitting and this is a cat. <laughs> But yeah, so I had a lot of savings built up and I was going crazy and I was like, I need to get out of here. I'm going crazy in my hometown. I was going crazy in my hometown. And I was like, I need an escape. And so I was like, I'm going to move to L.A. And so I talked to a couple friends that I knew that were staying there, or living there, or whatever. And I was like, how do you guys like and stuff? And the, the main thing I got was like, stay there for a little bit. Try it. Try it temporarily. See if you like it and then make the permanent decision. And I was like, I mean, valid. I respect that. And I will do that. So I did that. And I got an Airbnb. Um, I like this co-living house for a month. And it was really, really good. It was a good experience. I had like a little like I had some friends there from the co-living house that were like pre-built like, oh, yeah, let's go do activities together. And like, you know, let's let's go to Joshua Tree and let's go to Universal. And so I had like a little prompt of like people to spend time with and do things. And that was really fun and helpful. I ended up networking with a lot of people that actually like brought stuff to the future in the way that like I called DM to Danny which is um Brankins's manager and I was like can we go and get coffee or whatever he's like yeah and I got to meet him and stuff and we talked about whatever and then he's like also there's this new artist that I'm starting to do things with um he hasn't put any music out yet but his name is Jake Mintz you should like totally like meet up with him and do a shoot or something and I was like down so I DM'd him and like a day later we met and had a wonderful time and then like within the span of a week before I left to go back home me and Jake hung out like three times and it was wonderful and I love Jake and he's awesome we did a little shoot and it was in the pouring rain and it was amazing and that was the first of the thing with Jake and we didn't know what would happen in the future that's what's so wonderful about life is that like you have no idea where life is going to take you and every every person you encounter can be amazing things can come out of it for both you and them so so yeah I did my month in LA and I realized that LA was not actually the spot for me um I was actually kind of sad there it was very pretty weather but the weather was every day and I was like it's fall why aren't the leaves falling where's the cold weather where's like the the sweaters and stuff and I was kind of sad and I was like I really miss the seasons because I love seasons even the sad rain so I went back home I was also out of money also too at the time uh Breakins announced his very first headlining tour and I was like I'm gonna be the I'm gonna I'm gonna be the photographer for the Breakins tour someday if he ever does one Y'all. And so I reached out when he announced his tour and I was like pretty much immediately, like, hey, can I be your tour photographer? Unfortunately, they were not able to have a tour photographer because um, just like limited resources and stuff and the team and everything, which I understand because that's like it's so expensive to put on these tours. They were like whatever shows you want to go to, like feel free. You can shoot for them. And I was like, when am I ever going to get this opportunity again? So I did it. I did it. I did it. And I saved up and I bought a bunch of plane tickets and I was actually able to stay with friends. I hung out and met a lot of friends that I, I haven't met before. I stayed at their houses. We got Airbnbs together because they also went to the show. We had so much fun and that was a super good experience for me. It was it was really good except for the very end when I actually got stuck in Ohio on Christmas Eve and I barely made it home in time. It was snowed in. The last show got canceled. It was a mess. It was, I was like, the world is ending. I'm never going to get home. And then I got home in time for Christmas. It was a Christmas miracle. But that tour was really good. I got to meet a lot of cool people, like whether it be artists or or industry people or whoever, get a feel or like a taste of what this tour life is like. I don't think I can imagine doing 
a tour for somebody that I'm not passionate about. And that's why I don't know if I'll be able to have a future in tour photography, but I do know like for friends and stuff that I really, really care about, I really, really want to do their tours. So if you guys see this, um, please take me. You don't even have to pay me. Just let me stay with you and I'll do it for free. <laughs> And this is why I'm never going to make it a career. But anywho, so I did like half of the tour. So I did Seattle, Portland, two nights in Los Angeles, D.C., and then two nights in New York. And I was supposed to do Columbus, but it got canceled. And then there was a snowstorm and stuff. So um, so I did half of the tour and it was so fun. So then tour ended and I didn't realize it. I was so ready to be like, yeah, I'm going to do more stuff and everything. I was burnt out. I was so like all my creativity was gone. I was just what do I even do with my life? I don't know. And I was kind of miserable for a while. I was burnt out. I was like just in a really weird mental spot after the tour. So then I was at I was at my house in my hometown again and feeling just very like I, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life now. And the thing about me is I make bucket lists and I cross off everything on my bucket list. And then I'm like, I have no purpose in life anymore. Like, what am I doing? Because I don't make a new bucket list, which I should. Because I crossed off all of these unreachable goals. And now I'm like, what do I do next? So that happened. I went through some hard stuff. Like I had like some friend breakups and like out of money and panicking. Oh, also my childhood dog died. And so it was a really, really rough start of 2023. Out of the blue, I got a call. Like literally I was sitting on the couch just being like, Ugh. and then out of the blue, I got a call from Danny. Hey, so do you want to go on a road trip? And I was like, yes. Within a couple weeks, I was on a flight to Connecticut. And then I was helping my friend Jake move out of his hometown. And basically what we did is we packed up and we did a road trip from Connecticut to Los Angeles where he moved into his new spot and I was recording it I was taking photo and it was a very very big learning experience in the way that like you put a couple kids on a van and ship them across the country like communication and establishing a clear vision for every detail and like flexibility and so I learned a lot for myself and how I interact with other people how I interact in a work environment and professional and everything and I'm super glad that I had that experience and I would not trade it for anything so I came out of that trip and I was once again very burnt out I needed to continue to make money I had to job search and I hate job searching so much I got a job at my local camera store and I was a lab tech and I was developing film and scanning it and stuff and everything. And it was the best job, like the best normal job that I've had ever. And it was amazing. And I love my coworkers. It actually just, I, I parted ways with them about a month ago um, just because it wasn't a good fit after this time. And, and I love them and I respect them. I'm sad about the job because it was so wonderful. But I also agree that it was a good thing for us, for us to part ways. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that happened. And then, yeah, so I got that job and then that took up like a lot of my time and obviously as they do. And so I was working, working, working for months. And then you might have noticed my shirt. It says Lollapalooza. <laughs> so I made one of my goals in 2023 to shoot for a festival and I had no idea what festival I wanted to do. But then they announced the Lollapalooza festival lineup. And first of all, I love festival lineups. I look at them and I'm like, oh, who do I know? Who do I know? Break-Ins was actually on the Lollapalooza lineup for this year. And I was like, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. That's my weakness show. Oh, I can't. That's my weakness artist. Like, I have to go. Between that and like a whole bunch of other people I really wanted to see, I was like, hmm, should I do a festival this year? I don't know. And I was actually able to convince my parents to go with me. So we, we drove down. We drove over from Seattle all the way to Chicago in like a day and a half. And we did the drive and it was insane and whatever. But we went to Chicago for Lollapalooza. I've never been to Chicago before. Um, I love Chicago. I was actually able to shoot photos for... Because I was already planning on going to it anyways. But then it just happened to be that he was playing there too. And I was like, can I shoot for these? That was my first time. It was all of our first time ever playing or being at a festival and it was like the culture shock was crazy getting around was crazy I'm gonna do a whole nother video on like being a photographer at Lollapalooza and my experience there even though I only shot for one show of the actual festival but that whole that whole weekend was one of the best weekends I've ever had it was crazy and chaotic and stressful and sometimes and but it was so much fun and so rewarding and I miss it 
for being the first show back after a tour and like festival and all that, like Breakins did so good. Him and Wyatt, like it was so good. And I was like, oh my goodness. So anyways, the next tour, just like just after, I think just after Lollapalooza, they announced a second Breakins headline tour, which was like part two of the North American tour. And they actually used my photo that I took at Lollapalooza for that. And that was really cool for me because I was like, whoa, full circle moment. Like from the beginning here of like being a fan from like Ginger Tea to here now, like holy moly, guacamole. They announced a second tour. And once again, they didn't have, this one was a lot smaller. And so they, they didn't have a, um, they weren't able to take me on it, but I still finessed my way through. And I went to, where did I go this time? I had to be there for the very first hometown show. That was like an absolute, like, I don't care when it is or where I need to be at the, at the Columbus show. So I was at the very first one. So I went to the Columbus show. I did Orlando, Tampa, Sacramento, Santa Ana, and San Diego. And those were all the shows from that tour that I went on. And it was like, I thought the first tour couldn't be beat. The second one was exponentially better. One of, I said the last one was one of the best experiences of my life. This one tops that by like 500%. To me, the overall, like the energy and the vibe of the show and the audience and the musicians and everything, like it just felt so good and it felt right in my heart. Like this feels right. Not that the last one was bad, but this one was like, whoa. They had a whole year to listen to the songs Um, and so people actually knew the songs. It just felt so like good and right to me. I've seen a lot of openers in my life before for concerts. So the artist Gabby Start was opening and I was a big, big fan of Gabby Start's music. Like, um, his old artist name was Knapsack and now he's Gabby Start. And I was a big fan of him as Knapsack and now like Gabby Start. His first song, by the way, his first song is called Sydney and it's literally about, that's a joke. Or is it? (laughs) Getting to hear my favorite artists like six different times over the course of a month was like one of the best things ever. I I talk about this a lot, but I'm just still like, holy moly, because I've never seen an opening artist with as much good, amazing energy as Gabby Starr did. Like every show, it didn't matter if the people knew his songs or not. Every show he gave it 100% his all. Like the energy was there. The dancing was just incredible. Like I was blown away every time. I would say one of the top three people I've ever seen live, and I've seen a lot of concerts. And then, like, Breakins and Wyatt, they were doing great. Like, Breakins and Wyatt, the chemistry of them, every show, doesn't matter what state or I'm assuming what country they're in, their chemistry on stage is so perfect. They play so well. They balance each other out. Like, like Wyatt is able to play guitar but still be super engaging with the crowd and people love him. And, like, and Breakins is there and his vocals are holy moly. Whoa. How does he do it? I don't know. And it gets better every time somehow. And even when they're like exhausted, they're still giving their all. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Like somebody needs to give these people a raise because they're doing incredible work. So that that was like one of the best experiences ever. And I walked away from that tour feeling like, first of all, I love these people so much. I love them. I love what they do. I love them. I love them as friends. I love these people and I love this experience. And if I could repeat this exact thing over and over and over, I would. Because it was just like, I'm never thinking, oh, I wish I could go back and do this experience again. But I do feel it with this one. Like if I could repeat the vibes of this show, if I could repeat the vibes of this tour over and over That's exactly the feeling I want to go for. So that happened and that was the end of 2023 and I was super happy and inspired and like I felt good and I felt like for the first time after that tour I was like I'm I feel like I'm done networking. I feel like I'm not trying to get my name out there a bunch. I'm not trying to promote myself and that's how I felt in the way that like I still need to promote my work and get my photos out there but I really don't feel like I need to do anything else. I just need to work on my video again. So after that tour, I kind of was just like, I was content for the first time in a long time. I felt content and I was like, like I still need to be working towards stuff and I still need to be making stuff, but I feel happy and satisfied with this and with this feeling, like this is what I want. 
and I still need to, I need to create it in any community that I go into. Besides that tour during that year, um, I did a lot of creative work with the artist Braden Ross for his um, album. We did, we actually did some photo shoots in my neighborhood and in my backyard um, in our little like studio we have set up there. And um, I got to use that. I got to use my own space in my hometown to do this really really good photo shoot and it was really cool because Brayden was super he's always super nice to work with and he's super nice and kind and creative and he's flexible but he also has like a vision for what he wants and I really really love that so I did merch work for Brayden I did like promotional photos and everything and I've just been doing little stuff here and there now um I actually you know I I stopped my work I I stopped working at the camera store um now I'm kind of just in a space where I'm like, I have no idea what I want to do with my life right now. I know that I need community. So I need, I'm, I'm learning to get that because I'm so much more inspired when I'm around other creatives versus when I'm just by myself. And I spend a lot of time by myself. So now I'm trying to like get out there. I'm trying to save up so that I can move out because I really want to move somewhere that has a lot of creative people and um, cause we need that. We need that to thrive and grow and everything. And I'm starting to lose my voice and I can hear it. <laughs> um, I've been talking for an hour. You can tell how often I don't talk. So yeah. So currently my creative journey is, um, very slowly there. I'm trying to do more tangible art, more like I'm doing newsletters and I'm trying to do stickers and merch and stuff of like, not just like my name, but like, I want to create an image, like a pretty image of like, like here's some art. Like it's not just the people that I shoot, it's the art behind it too. And so I'm trying to put all those together in one spot and figure it out and everything. But, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, I'm taking a college class right now just to try and like do something with my life because uh, photo stuff isn't really taking off that much right now. But I'm hopeful for the future and I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's part of the fun. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, that is that is my entire creative journey up until now, basically. Um, <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be super happy to answer them. Um, Otherwise, I guess that's it. I'm going to make more videos on here someday, but we'll see. So love you guys. Bye bye.